AI is a technique that enables machines to mimic human behavior. Artificial intelligence is the theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision making, and translation between languages. Now, if you ask me, AI is the simulation of human intelligence done by machines programmed by us. The machines need to learn how to reason and do some self correction as needed along the way. And artificial intelligence is accomplished by studying how human brain thinks, learns, decides, and works while trying to solve a problem. And then using the outcomes of the study as a bias of developing intelligence software and systems. Now, the term artificial intelligence was actually coined way back in 1956 by John McCarthy, a professor at Dartmouth. For years, it was thought that computers would never match the power of the human brain. But it has proven to not be the case. Well, back then we did not have enough data and computational power. But now, with big data coming into existence and with the great advent of GPUs, artificial intelligence is much possible. Now, generally, people have a confusion among these terms, which are artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. So, don't worry today, I'm gonna resolve this issue for you as well. Now, this artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning, they all come under the roof of data science. Well, data science is something that has been there for ages, and data science is the extraction of knowledge from data by using different techniques and algorithms. Now, artificial intelligence is the technique which enables machine to mimic human behavior, and the idea behind AI is fairly simple yet fascinating, which is to make intelligent machines that can take decisions on its own now, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence technique, which uses statistical methods to enable machines to improve with experience. Now, deep learning, as we know, is a subset of machine learning, which makes the same computation of multi-layer neural network feasible and uses neural networks to stimulate brain-like decision-making. Now, let's have a look at the importance of artificial intelligence. So, AI has made it possible for machines to learn from experience and grow to perform human-like tasks. A lot of flashy examples of artificial intelligence you hear about like self-driving car, chess playing computers, rely heavily on deep learning and natural language processing. Now, using these technologies, computers can be trained to accomplish specific tasks by processing large amounts of data and recognizing patterns in that data. Now, there are a lot of areas which contribute to artificial intelligence, which are namely mathematics, sociology, philosophy, we have computer science, psychology, neuroscience, and biology. Now, if we have a look at the importance of artificial intelligence, it automates repetitive learning and discovery through data. AI performs frequent high volume computerized tasks reliably and without fatigue. It adds intelligence to existing products. In most cases, AI will not be sold as an individual application. Rather, products you already use will be improved with AI capabilities. Much like the Google Assistant, we added as a feature to a new generation of mobile phones. Now, AI adapts through progressive learning algorithms to let the data do the programming. The algorithm becomes a classifier or a predictor. So just as the algorithm can teach itself how to play any game, it can teach itself what product to recommend next online. It analyzes more and deeper data using neural networks that have many hidden layers. You need lots of data to train deep learning models because they learn directly from the data. The more data you can feed them, the more accurate they'll become. Now, AI achieves incredible accuracy through deep learning neural networks, which was previously impossible. These techniques from deep learning, image classification, object recognition, can now be used to find cancer on MRIs with the same accuracy as highly trained radiologists. Now guys, these were a lot of important aspects of artificial intelligence. And if you guys want to know more about artificial intelligence, deep learning, and a lot of technological stuff, make sure you subscribe our channel to never miss an update. Now let's move forward and understand the types of artificial intelligence. So there's not just one, but there are two types of artificial intelligence. And the first one is the narrow AI and the second one is the wide AI or the broad AI. So let's talk about narrow AI. Narrow AI is an artificial intelligence system that is designed and trained for one particular task. Now virtual assistants such as Amazon's Alexa, the Apple Siri use the narrow AI. Now narrow AI is sometimes also referred to as weak AI. 
However, that does not mean that narrow AI is inefficient or something of that sort. On the contrary, it is extremely good at routine jobs, both physical and cognitive. It is narrow AI that is threatening to replace many human jobs throughout the world. However, my curiosity did not stop here, so I was digging a little bit further. And what I found about white AI is that white AI is a system with cognitive abilities so that when the system is presented with an unfamiliar task, it is intelligent enough to find a solution. Now here the system is capable of having intelligent behavior across a variety of tasks from driving a car to telling a joke and the techniques aim at replicating and surpassing many capabilities of human intelligence such as risk analysis and other cognitive processes. Now artificial intelligence is used almost every day today and in systems such as mail spam filtering we have credit card fraud detection virtual assistance and so on now i believe there is no end or limitation to the number of application we have with artificial intelligence to make our lives better now let's go through some of the use cases that i believe stand out from the normal use cases or the applications of ai so if we talk about artificial intelligence sports, a computer system that can defeat a world champion, which is Deep Blue. Well, in the late 90s, when the common man was still wondering what is artificial intelligence, we had computers trained to play games and solve basic problems. Deep Blue was a chess playing computer developed by IBM. It is known for being the first computer chess playing system to win both a chess game and a chess match against a reigning world champion under regular time controls. Now, Deep Blue won its first game against a world champion in 1996 when it defeated Gary Kasparov in game one of a six game match. However, Deep Blue was then heavily upgraded and played Gary again in May 1997 and it became the first computer system to defeat a reigning world champion in a match under standard chess tournament prime controls. Now today AI is available on these free chess games on your phones and exponentially faster and better than the deep blue. Now next we have artificial intelligence for rescue mission. Now what a majority requires is the use of AI and technology to ensure that the help arrives faster. We can start by developing system which helps first responder find victims of earthquakes, flood and other natural disasters. Normally responders need to maximize aerial footage to determine where people could be stranded. However, examining a vast number of photos and drones footage is a very time and labor intensive. Now this is a time critical process and it might very well be the difference between life and death for victims. So an AI system developed at Texas A&M University permits computer programmers to write basic algorithms that can examine extensive footage and find missing people in under two hours. Then again, we have artificial intelligence for wildlife poaching prevention. Hunting of wildlife species and poaching is a global problem and it leads to extinction. For example, the latest African census showed a 30% decline in elephant population. So wildlife conservation areas have been established to protect these species from poachers and these areas are protected by park rangers. Now the rangers, however, do not always have the resource to patrol the vast area efficiently. Now Uganda's Queen Elizabeth National Park uses predictive modeling to predict poaching threat levels. Such models can be used to generate efficient and feasible patrol for the park rangers. Now if we talk about smart agriculture, in my opinion, neural networks work well to provide smart agricultural solution. Everything ranging from complete monitoring of the soil and crop yield to providing predictive analytics model to track and predict various factors and variables that could affect future yields. For example, the Berlin based agricultural tech startup, which is PEAT, has developed a deep learning algorithm based application called Plantex, which can identify defects and nutrients deficiency in the soil. Now these algorithms correlate particular for large patterns and create soil defects, plant pests and diseases. Well, one day you are wondering what exactly is artificial intelligence and later robots are ready to perform surgical procedures on you. Now, robots today are machine learning enabled tools that provide doctors with extended precision and control. Now these machines enable shortening the patient's hospital stay positive affecting the surgical experience and reducing the medical cost all at once. Similarly, mind control robotic arms and brain chip implants have been begun, helping paralyzed patients regain mobility and sensation of touch. 
Overall, machine learning and artificial intelligence are helping improve patients' experience on the whole. Now, if we talk about tracking the wildlife population, it is amazing to see that applications like iNaturalist and eBirds collect data on the species encounter. This keeps track of species population, ecosystem, and migration patterns. As a result, these applications also have an important role in the better identification and protection of marine and freshwater ecosystem as well. I personally believe that artificial intelligence will revolutionize all the aspects of our daily life and it will be subtle enough and have a big impact on everything around us. Now if we have a look at the different domains of artificial intelligence, so first of all we have neural networks. So neural networks are a class of models within the general machine learning literature and they are a specific set of algorithms that have revolutionized machine learning and artificial intelligence. If so you want to know more about neural networks, I'll drop a link in the description box below for the deep learning and neural networks tutorial. Now robotics is a branch of AI which is composed of different branches and applications of robots. AI robots are artificial agents acting in a real world environment. Artificial intelligence robots is aimed at manipulating the objects by perceiving, picking, moving and destroying it. Now, if you talk about expert systems in artificial intelligence, an expert system is a computer system that emulates the decision making ability of human expert. It is a computer program that uses artificial intelligence technologies to stimulate the judgment and the behavior of a human or an organization that has expert knowledge and experience in a particular field. Now, fuzzy logic system. So fuzzy logic is an approach to computing based on the degrees of truth rather than the usual true or false. The Boolean logic on which the modern computer is based. Fuzzy logic systems can take imprecise, distorted and noisy input information. So fuzzy logic is a solution to complex problems in all fields of life, including medicine, as it resembles human reasoning and decision making. Now, one of the most important aspects of AI is natural language processing. It refers to the artificial intelligence method of communicating with intelligence system using a natural language. Now, by utilizing NLP and its components, one can organize the massive chunks of text data, perform numerous automated tasks, and solve a wide range of problems such as machine translation, name identity recognition, sentimental analysis, speech recognition, and topic segmentation. Now, these were the different domains of AI and it just tells us how wide AI is and it's just not confined to just one sort of area of development. Now, according to the job site, indeed, the demand for AI skills has more than doubled over the last past three years and the number of job posting is up by 119%. Now, this artificial intelligence tutorial will be incomplete without the different job profiles. So, if artificial intelligence appeals to you and you want a job in the AI field, then there are the different job profiles you can apply for if you have all the AI skills. Now again, if you want to know more about the artificial intelligence skills, what are required to become a machine learning engineer, supposedly a data scientist, you can refer to our other videos. I'll leave the link in the description box below as well for those videos. So the first job profile we're going to talk about is machine learning engineers. So they are sophisticated programmers who develop machines and systems that can learn and apply knowledge without specific direction. Artificial intelligence is the goal of a machine learning engineer. It cannot be more straightforward and they are computer programmers, but their focus goes beyond specifically programming machines to perform specific tasks. They create programs that will enable machines to take actions without being specifically directed to perform those tasks. And they can earn a whooping $110,000 per annum. That's a huge amount of money. Now the next job profile is the data scientist. And it has been awarded as the sexiest job of the 21st century. So data scientists are those who crack complex data problems with their strong expertise in certain specific disciplines. They work with several elements related to mathematics, statistics, computer science, and much more. And the data scientist role is a position for a specialist. You can specialize in different types of skills like speech analysis, text analysis, image processing, video processing. You have material simulation, medicine simulation, and each of these specialist role is a very limited in number and hence the value of such a specialist is immense with an average salary of 90 to 100 thousand dollars per annum. Now let's talk about an artificial intelligence engineer. 
So artificial intelligence engineer works with algorithms, neural networks, and other tools to advance the field of AI in some way. Engineers may also choose between projects involving weak or strong artificial intelligence with a different set of focus on different capabilities. The salary of an AI engineer is around $105,000. Now the next job profile which I'm going to talk about is the business intelligence developer. So a business intelligence developer spends a lot of time researching and planning solutions for existing problems within the company. The business intelligence developer is responsible for aggregating data from multiple sources in an efficient data warehouse and designing enterprise level solutions for a very large multidimensional database. Business intelligence developers play a key role in improving the efficiency and the profitability of a business. It's a career that's in high demand and commands an annual median salary of $92,000. Now the big data engineers and architects have among the best paying jobs in artificial intelligence. In fact, they command an annual median salary of $150,000. The big data solution architect is responsible for managing the full life cycle of a Hadoop solution. This includes creating requirement analysis, the platform selection, designing of the technical architecture, the design of the application design and the development testing and the deployment of the proposed solution. So these were the job profiles which you can refer or you can apply for if you have all the skills which are needed for these particular job profiles. And finally, if we have a look at the companies which are hiring, Companies that hire top AI talent range from startups like Argo AI to tech giants like IBM. And according to Glassdoor, these are the leading employers who hired top AI talent over the past years. So as you can see, we have Dropbox, Adobe, IBM, LinkedIn, Walmart, we have Uber, we have Red Hat and Cheese. Now let's go ahead and start our demo and see how we can perform object detection using TensorFlow. Now to begin with, you want to make sure that you have TensorFlow installed with all of its dependencies like the TensorBoard, Python, Matplotlib, we have the Coco API and the Protobuf. Now I'll explain you guys what all steps are needed. So for CPU TensorFlow, you can just do pip install TensorFlow, but of course the GPU version of the TensorFlow is much faster at processing, so it is ideal. Now next we need to do is to clone the GitHub repository of TensorFlow. So for that, just go to GitHub and type TensorFlow, which is the official GitHub repository of TensorFlow. And inside that, we have the model section. Just go to this models. You can either clone this TensorFlow model or download it as per your wish. So I have already downloaded the TensorFlow model. Now the TensorFlow object detection model uses protobuf to configure model and the training parameters. Before the framework can be used, the protobuf libraries must be compiled. Now to download protobuf, all you need to do is go to Google slash protobuf in GitHub. And here you will have all the different versions of protobuf. So according to your OS, which is Linux, Mac OX, or the Windows OS, or if you are using only the Python, you can download the required protobuf. So once you have downloaded TensorFlow and protobuf, Create a folder in just C, which is known as TensorFlow, and in this you'll have the models master. Extract this and rename it as models and extract the protobuf. Now, inside protobuf, you have the bin folder. Now, all you need to do is go to this bin folder. So, let me just open the command prompt. Uh, here I am using the anaconda prompt, but you can use the command prompt as well. So once you have downloaded and renamed the models master as models, go back to the GitHub repository and inside models you have the research and inside research there is the object detection model which we are interested in. So let's go to the object detection model here. Now as you can see this TensorFlow object detection API gives an accurate machine learning model description of how the objects are detected and here you have the steps. For the setup. So in the installation, as you can see, we have the prerequisites or the dependencies, which are the protobuf, Python, pillow. You can install all of these using the pip or the conda command. Okay. So to download the protobuf on Ubuntu, you can do the sudo apt get install. Then you can use the Cython, the context lib, the Jupyter, and the matplotlib. Alternatively, you can also use the pip and the conda commands. 
uh, next what you need to do is once you have downloaded and extracted the protobuf you need to copy this command now then you need to go into the tensorflow then you need to go into the models and then inside that you need to go into the research now once you are inside the research what you need to do is copy this command and paste it and run this command here so what it'll do is i'll explain here is that it will take all the object if you go inside the models research and inside if you go to the object detection you can see there's a folder named protos so once you have compiled that code all the proto files are then converted into the python files now in order to have a better understanding of what the different supported components are inside the protos folder which contains the functional definition especially the train the eval the sst the faster rcnn and the processing protos which are important while training of model all these proto files are present here what you need to do is that run that command and all the protos file will be converted into python executable files now after that what we need to do is coco api installation now let's understand what is coco now coco refers for common objects in context it is a large image data set designed for object detection segmentation person key points detection stuff segmentation and caption generation now this package provides matlab python and luna apis that assist in loading passing and visualizing the annotations in coco as you can see we have 330k images in which we have more than 200k labeled images we have 1.5 million objects instances 80 object categories we have 91 stuff categories five captions per image and we have 250 people with this key points now when you have downloaded the models inside models research and inside the object detection you need to go to the g3 doc in which we have the tensorflow detection model zoo now here we have all the list of models which are trained on the coco data set so as you can see we have the sst mobile net version 1 we have the sst mobile net version 1 ppn coco depth coco we have the sst inception we have faster rcnn we have different mask rcnn inception now an important thing to consider here while selecting a model is that it depends on your system which model you should use suppose if your system is low on gpu but has higher ram you can go for a model which has a higher speed and a higher map point now this value should always be high if you are looking for a more accurate prediction in your images so once all your dependencies are downloaded and you have installed tensorflow and protobuf let's go ahead and see how we can do the coding now inside the object detection folder there is an object detection tutorial now first of all what we need to do is import all the libraries the numpy the os the sys star file we are importing tensorflow as well we are importing the collections and the various imports which are needed then we need to append the path of the object detection folder and finally uh, if the version of tensorflow is less than 1.4 we need to upgrade it as the latest tutorial supports the tensorflow object 1.4 and above so let's run this block by block so first of all let's load all the libraries now next what we are going to do is import the object detection module some of the labels which are the label map util which will be later used to provide the labels to the input images and based on that our model will be created now next what we are going to do is we are going to select which model to download so for example here we are using the sst mobile net version 1 coco 2017 so if you go back to the list of the models you can select any of the given models here but make sure your system should support the required amount of ram and it should have the required amount of gpu to support the models which you are selecting so for this tutorial i'm using a model which will give me the results faster so all you need to do is provide the model name the model file and the download base from where it should download now as i mentioned earlier that tensorflow works on the graph principle which is the data flow graph so what we are going to do is give the part to the detection graph which we are going to use here which will be supported by this model and then we are going to give the part to the labels 
now to download the models we have this code which will take the url and which will download this file and produce the frozen inference graph of that model which is the ssd coco mobile net so once this has been done we are going to load the graph which is the frozen inference graph into the memory so here we are using the tf.graph method and tf.graphdef to define the graph which we are going to use next what we need to do is load all the labels and the categories and the category index from our data set so the data set is coco so once we have loaded all the labels and the categories now is the time to convert all the images to a numpy array so this code which is definition here of the load image into numpy array which we will use later in this code what it does is takes the images and converts it into a numpy array so it will be easier for tensorflow to process it now here we are going to provide the images for testing purposes so as you can see we have the test image folder here and inside that you can input all your images whichever you want to test upon this model so for example i have taken the range from 1 to 8 it will take all the images named image 1 to image 7 so let's load this now this function what it does is run the inference for a single image now for a single image first of all it detects all the boxes the detection mask and provides a certain box on the object it detects and finally we have the for loop the main for loop in which we'll take the images from the test image path and open them and one by one we'll take all the images and do the inference for a single image one by one so as you can see we are using the load image into numpy array we are using the np dot expand now we'll expand the dimension since the model expects images to have the shape which can be one two three based upon the categories and you can see the output will get the detection boxes the detection classes and the detection score and finally we are using the matplotlib to show us the image so let's run this we'll get our output here so this might take time depending upon the processor which you are using or the system which you are using so since we have taken the model which will take the least amount of time this shouldn't take much time but then again tensorflow is heavy and the tensors are multi-dimensional arrays as i explained which do all the heavy computation so guys here we have the results so as you can see let's begin from the start as you can see it identified the dog as a 94 percent it has provided a box the label and the score which is the detection score how much it is similar to all the images which has been imported in the coco data set so as you can see here we have the person the various percentage we have kite here we have a tie detected it can detect objects in such a heavy background as you can see the person are so much camouflaged in the background but still it has managed to score that person as you can see here it has detected an airplane person the kite now you can use your own images all you need to do is copy that images into the test image folder and use the naming convention provided here as the image one image two so guys that's it for this artificial intelligence tutorial i hope you got to know what exactly is ai the importance of ai what are the various applications of ai in our day-to-day -day life how it can improve our day-to-day -day life with certain applications which are being developed all across the globe what are the different domains of ai the different job profiles in ai what all job profiles you can apply for if you have the right skills which are required and finally the companies which are hiring for these professionals